Hello everyone and welcome back to Alone in the Dark. Today, po quite possibly, we're going to see the end of Carnby's story. And actually interesting discussion here, but depending on how today goes and if you guys have liked the game enough, I would consider doing a second, more abridged run with Emily, the other character. I've actually been told that although a lot of the gameplay elements are the same, that Emily's story is different, more interesting, and actually fleshes out the story even better than Carnby's side. So maybe we should do that, okay? Uh, but anyway, where are we in the story exactly? Conley had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the sinking car, but left her father to drown. Right. He could have saved him. There was time. He just chose not to. Instead, he took Grace back to New Orleans and collected his paycheck. And apparently, as we know from what he said in the last time we played... The mother, we found out, was basically kind of abusive and didn't take care of the daughter. That The father was actually trying to save her from that situation. Wow. Um, okay. <clears throat> so what they want us to do is leave an offering at the Whispering Tree. <clears throat> According to this, there's still something in the sitting room. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, we were been there and I didn't really see anything, just like how the clerk's office is glitched. Um, the Whispering Tree... We can't get into the lab or the uh, surgery area because they're locked. We can't do those yet. So I think we need to go to the Whispering Tree, which would be in the conservatory. So we're in the sitting room. We're going to go downstairs. Uh, Man, we can't go that way. We can't go through the piazza. We can't go through the, through the dining room. How the hell are we going to get to this? You know what I think we got to do? Don't we have to go to Gray's apartment? Isn't that what we were doing? We were going to Gray's apartment and we saved and I've loaded and we're back here. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. If you remember, we went to Gray's apartment and we were standing right outside of it. And then the game, yeah, this is weird. We were totally standing outside of Gray's apartment and ready to enter it. And then, uh, and saved, and now I've loaded, and I'm not there. Yeah, see? How weird. I wonder why... It didn't save our position. Because it's it's always saved our position before. And this time it, like, teleported us back a few more. I wonder if there's a reason for that. <clears throat> Alright, so... We should be going this way. See, the door opens itself. The self-opening door. Okay. So we're going to go into Gray's apartment. And we're going to see stuff for the first time. We've never been in here. <laughs> oh, Emily's in here, too. Detective, am I glad to see you. Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us sniffing around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. The music. Oh, Emily, you look for clues. Okay. An achievement. The past as a present. <clears throat> Get what you want. False book. Myth of the Golden Fleece. It's a hollow book. How do you open it? Oh, you probably put it on the shelf, I bet. What's this on the floor? Well, that's dialogue with her. Have you found anything? What? Y yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen some things. Okay. Let me know if there is anything you want to talk about. Uh, Jade, have a good time out of town, and I'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. What is... Something on the ground. A toy talisman lanyap. What set is that for? For the All the Worlds the Stage set. We had already found a curious napkin... Now a toy talisman, we have one more to find. Okay. <clears throat> hey. All right, I think this is gonna open up a secret. There's a book missing. Surprise! I was just rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> so where would this be? Ah, this is the other half of the apartment. That was a secret area. Gotcha. 
<clears throat> I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. Hmm. Right, like they think that they're all involved in this delusion. In reality, it may not be a delusion. What the? What were you saying about mass delusion? <laughs> I don't want to do Shadow this. Shadow seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Right. Even the name Dorsetta refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetta was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... The black goat of the woods with a thousand <laughs> shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. Aha. Uh -huh. First meeting transcript crypt clue. Good to finally go. meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You're from the Seattle, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. <laughs> do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. Juan? John? Who's John? No. Juan Luis Jorge. Wait there a moment. Here, take a look. Is he... Oh, he is the author. It's a magnificent book. Life-changing, even. The real Juan is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? <laughs> Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob Van Ostart. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. What is he talking about? Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Heartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time. In time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons. All the dark men. <laughs> Please, screamed. Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Mm -hmm. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. Yeah, what happened? Why'd he scream right there? <laughs> oh, no. That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? The Snake Dagger. The Snake Dagger, in monograph by Yael Klein. In Ludwig Prinz's book on pagan rituals, called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vahi, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. Oh, don't we have that? We have it that. It has long been thought of as yeah. a poor translation of the original text. That it would be more appropriate with Worm Dagger from the Latin Vermis Cultrum. We have that dagger from this uh, one of the things. This seems natural, following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince's book, uh -uh. The Vermis Mysteris, should literally translate to the mystery of the worm. However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Prin certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, 
In the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. Huh. Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. Oh, it's real. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. This game is very lore heavy. Continue. Look, it's another page. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning. Only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand. So this poker. dagger stops possession. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire. Aha! That to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy. That it was thought of as something poisoning the mind rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note Hello, you is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. So the snake dagger we have in our inventory right now is supposed to be something that stops possessions. There it is, the sacrificial dagger. <laughs> Look, and it looks like two snakes. The dagger swathed in the grip of the two sleek snakes found buried in the sunken temple along with the dark man's contract. So this is supposed to stop a possession. You're supposed to put it into the eye of someone who's possessed. And if they survive, it kills the demon inside of them. Fighting fire with fire. <clears throat> okay, what's in here? A locked closet? Well, we don't have a key. Uh... Hmm. Go this way? No. Is this it? Hold on. Wait a minute. It says there's another room. What? Oh, look at this. Oh, what do we have here? That's a little sneaky. Huh. Has that been there this whole time? Furniture key. Key item. It was there. It was in the picture. There was, a, there was a key in, like, a picture, and he was able to take the key out? What the heck? Turn around! Oh, my God, the camera angle. keeps changing. Okay. What the hell? Answer the phone. Where's the phone? You open the bureau, there's nothing in it, and then the phone rings. Right. Hello? The dead, it can't be. Who is uh. this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything he wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. 
<laughs> right. Investigate the broken clock. <laughs> oh, I don't know. What are the numbers? We don't have any numbers, right? We didn't find any numbers yet. Oh, wait a minute. You know what it is? We have to look at the pattern on the floor in the other room. Ugh, the controls screws up when you go around the corner. Okay, so see, it's basically, it goes, the two circles are down, but then the inner circle is facing up. That's the key. And then there's an arrow on the top, an arrow on the bottom, an arrow on the bottom. See that? So hopefully that'll solve it. See, so this is supposed to be rotated this way, like that. Yep. And then it's an arrow on the top and an arrow on the bottom. There it is. <laughs> yup, we did it. Okay. So we're gonna be warped to another memory now, right? You okay? Look. You look a little frazzled. Look at the wardrobe. <laughs> Stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... <laughs> yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. Is that going to tell her? Maybe he thinks he's going nuts. That's why he doesn't want to tell her that he just got a phone call. Right? Alright, we're going into the wardrobe now. Oh, what the fuck? Miss Hartwood, Whoa. I think you're going to want to see this. Did you see that? Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to... Whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? <laughs> no. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Harwood. So she can't see it. Where does he go? Right? Where is he actually going? Is he really going into this other dimension? Or is it all in his mind? Well, we're in a... Appears to be a shed full of... Sand. What the hell? Where are we now? I have no idea. Another thing that has to do with Jeremy's past, I guess. Uh, I guess we use the shotgun. And we do a lot of machine gun ammo, too. Okay. You guys are very quiet today in chat. What's going on? Whoa. The game's glitching out a little bit. It's a little weird. You saw we like froze up and teleported in the, in the room. What the hell is this? So it's not sand, it's snow? Where the hell are we now? Achievement. Frenzy. Enter hell. What? Enter hell? Uh. Gee, we're in hell. It's pretty rare when a game will just say, like, you're in hell, right? Like, you just outright admits. So you're kind of fucked. What is this? A flare gun? Use the flare gun to light up the sky and look for waypoint flags. Light your way forward. We have two different handguns now. Get it. To hold right and then you'll swap guns. Yes. They want me to shoot a flare gun up. Didn't do anything. A sallow offering, Lanya. We have a new set. The Do Not Disturb sign, the Tessellated Shard, and the Sallow Offering. Show set bonus text. Play. What can be said about Jacob <laughs> Van Ostat without evoking contempt or apologia? 
The first piece of information is the obvious. He is not the explorer Yermi idolized in his youth, but the figment of his imagination. If you want biographical facts, I am not the one to answer such questions. In the case of Yermi, he is a guardian of imagination, or rather a persona appointed the role of containing a self-sabotaging mania. However useful Jacob once was, his loyalty to Jeremy has slowly been replaced by fanaticism. So maybe Jeremy like a or maybe a... who has for decades been burnt by his own sacred flames now does what he imagines the fire wants. Jeremy has lost all control over Jacob and suffers greatly because of him, but is admittedly also still invigorated by his labor. In the plainest of words, Jacob keeps Jeremy sick so he can remain Jeremy. So maybe Jacob is the dark man, right? This is who he's actually based on. Rich88 says, well, I put this weekend in remaster when it releases. I want to, but it has no date, <clears throat> right? We have absolutely no idea when it's coming out. I would love to play it, though. It's, a, it's one and two coming out together, I believe. But yeah, they're great games. I want to play them. We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. Oh, it's too loud. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred... It's too loud to hear what he's saying, so I'm just going to read it. He was chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items along the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer. We're all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in the origin and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. It was so taken by our find, we were surprised by the sun's falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to the camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all of our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. Wow. <clears throat> the next day, the weather became worse. We had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking that he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed towards the coast up the climb towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him, transfixed by a burning sky, the Celestial Lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him to be turned, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly and said, You must leave now, air stern. Go and never come back. And so I left. So what the hell did they find here, right? Is it fucking aliens? Is it dark magic? Demons? What the hell did they find? We don't know. But we're gonna find out, because I think that's where we're headed. We're headed to the Stellarium. So what are we supposed to do? Definitely enemies in the game. Not right now, but there's absolutely enemies in this game, for sure. We fought moldy men, maggot men, all kinds of stuff. Really, right? 
No, that's water. Alright, so probably nothing there. Probably just had to get through that. Okay. No, didn't see the eclipse. Couldn't. It's too cloudy and rainy here in Washington today. Can't see anything, so... Uh, no. Cannot see the eclipse. So this must be the Stellarium. First aid. Don't really need any something. Another ice pick. We already have an ice pick. There's no reason to pick up another one. Look at this thing. Oh, wow. Definitely some crazy technology here. Look how slow you're forced to walk. You know, I think you're like freezing. Look, see how there's ice on the screen? What did the guy see? He stayed behind in the freezing temperatures. Investigate the ruins. Look at this. Who's that? An enemy? Can't fire on whoever it is. See, they won't let you. Hey, you! What are you doing here? What is this place? Turn back, detective. You're not wanted here. Oh, take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, you're wrong, detective. Uh. You're wrong. Oh, shit, he's frozen. <laughs> what the fuck? He's just chasing me. Look. I'm lighting him on fire. He's not doing anything. Funny. <laughs> His body's on fire, doesn't do anything. Alright, this is an epic boss fight. <laughs> Where'd he go? Wow. He was a zombie. I thought the, the flares had any effect. <laughs> right. Oh, what, a, what an imposing guy. Very threatening. And these sides here. He's not the thing, says Steak Sandwich. Let's hope he doesn't mutate into a fucking alien monster. That'd be great. But uh, he wasn't very threatening at all. He's just kind of annoying. Get up in your face with stinky zombie bread. Can you imagine what that smells like? All rotten, rotten flesh. Align the stars? How the fuck do I do that? Use the sacrificial dagger. Use the talisman. What the fuck? Taurus. Taurus. I figured you wouldn't want your stars aligned, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, of course. Thank you, it. It's a line, is it not? No, it looks a line to me. not facing the right direction. Oh, shit. Here we go. So what is this 
do. Whoa! Oh, what the? <laughs> the hilarious force. Whoa, he's back. He is the, th he is the thing. Why couldn't you say that? He's turning into the thing. Oh my god, look at his arms. He's got fucking the thing you can do arms. Yo! <laughs> That's hideous. Abilities. <laughs> I'm all out of bullets. Oh no. Jeremy, oh god. Oh shit. Lobotomy. Jeremy has a lobotomy spike in his head. You did everything! Aren't you happy? Stupid charlatan. What more do you want from me? You want me to lose my mind? Oh my lord! Doctor! Let's see! Who's he hitting for real? Who did he actually hit? Who was it? Jesus. What you think, combat? Who was he beating? He was beating someone. Oh shit! Who was that really? Oh man. Chapter five. What just happened? Oh god. What did they do? Paralyze him? You awake? You are awake. Mr. Conby's up. Hey, buddy. I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Saw the man in and you were being violent. He stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. Oh, that was Dr. Gray he was hitting? Okay. Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, Combat. Want to try standing up? So he, he basically did a lobotomy to Jeremy, and he beat up Dr. Gray. Well, yeah, look. If it isn't the hero of the day, how are you feeling, Detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? Things are fine. Very quiet. Lobotomy. Oh man. What's up with him? Painkillers? No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize, dear Jeremy. 
I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But he's gonna live. Of course. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. <laughs> Oh my god. Wild. So now, back to normal. Break the pact with the dark man. So because you lobotomized Jeremy, maybe now all the hallucinations will end? But I mean, that's not the end of the investigation. You gotta figure out what the hell's really going on. Everett. Wait a minute, all your evidence disappeared. Look, it's all gone. <clears throat> Everything was back to normal. Did any of it really happen? What had Carnby actually been doing all night? <laughs> Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Does she still want to take Jeremy away from Dorsetto? I will have to insist that you do. This is not that kind of institution. Jeremy, hang on for a little longer, okay? We'll be going back to New Orleans soon. Oh, good. I do so miss the city lights. I mean, it doesn't sound any much different because he was already crazy, right? <clears throat> so now instead of being loony, he's just talking very slowly, <laughs> calmly. Is she wearing a masquerade mask? Can't, can't talk. Here we go. Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. They're gonna have their party with this wishing tree, which it does have a bearing on the plot. We just don't know what yet. We don't actually know what the tree's supposed to be. <clears throat> you seen Emily around? <laughs> I saw her packing some things into that old jalopy you arrived in about an hour ago. I'm sure she hasn't given up on you yet. Catch you later. <laughs> Looking forward to it, detective. She didn't have much to add at all, did she? Well, I guess everyone's here. Batiste. What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the storm. Radio says it could be a wild one. What are you going to do if there is one? You're going to fight it? <laughs> you don't know where Emily is, do you? She's packing some of Jeremy's things. Says she wanted to take him away. I'm sure she'll come and get you when she's ready. So from Emily's perspective, if she's not seeing the hallucinations Carnby is, it must be so different because now Carnby's running around, seeing things, fucking lobotomizing people. Right? Because he's seeing all this crazy shit that she's not seeing. What's up, El Grey Zorro? I should probably get a move on then. See you around, compare. Huh. She's blocking the way out of here. That's the door out. Good to see you back on your feet, Detective. Have some gumbo. It's supposed to be G U M B O. They Save spelled it G O M B O in the subtitles. Weird. Seems like everyone's in a pretty good mood. The Eve of St. John is the most important date of the whole year. It's the only day when the black goat of the woods tends to her They're young. still doing this cult shit. This black goat of the woods. What the hell? I'm gonna go look for Emily. Don't worry about her. She wouldn't leave without you, would she? Fox Mulder, please stop blowing up my spot in chat telling everyone I'm an alien. No one's supposed to know about that. No key, can't get in there. <clears throat> Talk to her, but... That is 
one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. So how does this all work? You dance around chanting? For the ritual, I mean? Stay and find out, detective. It might just do you good. Something crazy is about to happen. So what they're saying is Jeremy's madness and his whole dark man deal was basically throwing them all into disarray that they were going to do this ritual or this black magic voodoo, black goat shit, this fertility god. They do it once a year and their festival was going to be ruined by him being crazy. So by you lobotomizing him, you essentially stopped the crazy and are, they're happy you did that. <laughs> you haven't seen Emily, have you? No, detective. I haven't. Wow. Thanks for the information. Wait for Miss Hartwood? Not yet. I'm talk to everyone. <clears throat> Alright, tell me. What the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn the page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol it's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know? Just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. Right. <laughs> so this is basically New Year's Eve, but with a tree metaphor. Exactly. You're so smart. It's about starting again. I mean, who could use a positive message like that and more than a bunch of lunatics like us? Okay. I get the feeling some of you think this year is going to be special. Any idea why? Well, we got some new words, thanks to your buddy Jeremy, and some other changes to the program. Let's just say we're all in this year. What does all that mean? No idea what that even means. They have new words and they're all in? Oh boy. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. <laughs> mother? The tree is Mother? What's your part in this? I'm the Cabri San Corn. It's very important. Only I can settle our debt. What the hell are they talking about? You know, I had my doubts. But you are in the right place, Grace. I think you might be right. For once. Yes, being in this voodoo cult is the perfect place for a small child, of course. Right? Well, I guess that's it. I don't think we're going to find anything else. I guess we got to wait for Emily and see what happens in the plot. We found this tree earlier on. I had no idea what it was. But we're about to find out. It's going to turn into a god and kill them all, probably. Eat them up. Flip them up. Here we go. <laughs> Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, you need to move forward. All in, Doc. Oh, boy. It all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. <laughs> now are there are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, Mother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Hear us, mother, and take pity on us. Take pity on us. Uh, Emily's up in the balcony. We just saw her creeping up here. What are they doing? They're gonna. Oh my god, they're gonna kill the girl. What the hell? Stop! Are you crazy? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Natalie's up there. She's alive. Get my uncle out of here. Oh shit, she's burning the tree. Jeremy, come with me. Get over here. Oh shit. Jeremy, come with me. Jeremy, come here. It's alive. The tree's alive. Holy shit. Trey's an a monster alien. Holy shit. <laughs> Ouch. That monster leave their seto. I have to stop it. Huh. Well then, um. <laughs> uh. I wasn't really expecting that to happen. It's it's kind of like I'm completely desensitized because like who the hell knew that was going to happen? Nothing like that at all has happened in the game up to now. So that is just so weird that it's like. It's not scary, it's just off-putting and odd, right? Like, there's nothing scary about that. It's just so bizarre that it just happened. There's nothing like that's in the game up to this point. So where do I go? Can I shoot the thing with a flare? I have flares. Maybe I can shoot it with flares. Uh, I'm stuck. I can't go this way. Go up here? Oh, okay. Where, where am I going? I can't. What the hell? I can't do anything. I'm stuck here. This way? No. Half a body on the floor. I don't know where to go. Up here? Up here. Okay. This is so weird. So the tree was alive all along. I guess Jeremy was trying to stop it, but because you stopped Jeremy, you were able to stop it, and then they did this weird new sacrifice. This is so I don't get it. <laughs> I guess we'll get more information on Emily's side, but she seemed to know what was going on, right? She seemed to be now. All kinds of ammo now. Yeah, there you go, Fox Boulder. You become an alien non stop with this one. You just saw one. Fox Boulder is kind of an alien creature, right? Even a monster. Wow, oh, they're loading you up on ammo right now. I don't know how this is going to go. This is pretty darn weird. <laughs> what is going on? Oh my god. Do you seriously have to fight that? Jewels. I don't know. If I stand still, it doesn't really hit me. It just happens. Oh, okay. Knock me down. Oh, 
god, a moldy man. What the hell? Oh. Uh... It spawned a million enemies. What am I supposed to do there? I don't have any explosives. What am I supposed to do to that? It's an insane amount of enemies that are coming out at once. Uh. Well, color me confused. I don't know what I was supposed to do there. With that many enemies. That's ridiculous.
health in the fucking room. Stupid shit. What the fuck? It spawned enemies? I what? <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Oh my god, this is fucking shit. This is awful. It spawns enemies out of nowhere and you can't do anything about it and you just die. And again, there's no healing in that room. So once the fight starts and you get to ground level, you're fucked. You only have whatever healing you have in your inventory. And everything hits for half health. Like, literally every enemy there was hitting me for 50% health. What the fuck? Yeah, there was no animation, nothing. They're just there hitting you. What the fuck? So I think they want you to shoot it in the plush room. Like crazy, I can't move. 
Look at this nonsense. Now I have no healing again. This is it, my last heal time. That's it, I'm done. I have no healing now. Dude, this fight is atrocious and bad. What? Nothing even hit me. <clears throat> Nothing even fucking... This is trash. You can't hit the enemies because the camera is constantly shaking. So you can't hit the enemies on the third wave. And I got hit by nothing. Like, literally nothing touched me. I just died. Wow, this is completely fucking awful. They fucked it up bad. The final boss is trash. <laughs> they shake the camera and make it so you can't hit the enemies. So they just mob you and you can't do anything. And then I just get died to nothing. Like, there was literally nothing there and I died. <sighs> I mean, the ground shook, but what do you want me to do? Make the ground not shake? I mean, what are you? What am I supposed to do there? This whole segment makes no fucking sense at all. Wow, this is trash. And no checkpoints. What the fuck? Yo, this is all 
like old school Resident Evil boss shit right there. It really is. Well, I did it. That was tough. That was a tough final boss. Limited resources. Detective. Oh, what the hell was that? I try to tell you. Why is it so small? There was so much evidence. Look. Their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I'm not so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. That was the smallest subtitle I've ever okay? seen. Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. <laughs> I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, buddy. Wow. How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything. But I'm not mad. <laughs> yeah, but this has happened before. Remember they said over time this kept happening, that their settle kept burning down or getting destroyed right, by a natural really disaster? So this seems like the natural order of things. Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? And then eventually it gets built I up again, people start worshipping again, so. and then that thing grows back. Don't leave. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. Wow. No explanation, huh? Maybe we'll get more of an elaboration on the Emily side of things. The whole idea that there, whoever goes here gets psychically controlled by some black magic or alien creature <clears throat> that then does blood worshipping rituals to make the creature get empowered again. It's an interesting premise, but what is what creates that mind control that they all have these crazy hallucinations and do the same weird ritualistic things, right? <clears throat> Jim New Orleans from the Black Goat. And of course, there's the, the there's the question of what happens with Carnby. Like, Carnby apparently was an inmate here, right? But then he forgot, but then he came back? It's weird, right? All right, well, we did it. We beat it with Carnby. What I would say is if we do a new game, right? And now we do it <clears throat> with Emily. And we do the Emily side. And I wonder how many new achievements and things you'll get from the Emily side. I don't know. But the thing is, we could skip the intro because we've already seen it. Now we pick Emily, right? And we play as her. It'll be a completely different run. We'll see how different it is. By the way, I received a $2 tip from Christopher. You could have avoided this fight with the tree if you left it an offering earlier in the game. Really? But what would the offering have been? I don't know what that would have been. It had said on the map, leave an offering for the tree, but I don't know what that meant. Nor did, did we, I don't know what we would have given the tree, right? I don't even know if the tree was accessible. I don't think you could have gotten back there at that point. I think that the doors were locked. <clears throat> I could be wrong, but that's what I thought. So, all right, well, that's the Carnby run, everyone. I guess now it will do. Uh, let's go through, let's try an Emily run and see what happens. And because, I mean, I feel like we got half the story and the story was very interesting. But what the hell does she figure out? It sounds like she knows more about this than, than Carnby. Like, Carnby knows the Jeremy side of the story, but it sounds like Emily knows the voodoo side of the story. And I think that's what we're going to investigate and find out as Emily. So I guess we'll check that out, but 
Thanks for watching the Carnby side. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just going to continue this going at the same playthrough, uh, numbers-wise, and, uh, and see where it goes. So, all right, excellent.